uh, Dr. Nidesh and uh, join. हाँ ज्वाइन करने का हाँ हाँ ज्वाइन हो मैं कर रहा हूँ सर अभी हाँ नहीं अभी ज्वाइन करेंगे तभी तुम इट इज माई प्रिवलेज टू इंट्रोड्यूस दे आफ्टरनून स्पीकर डॉक्टर उदय के शिंदे प्रेजेंटली इज पोस्टेड इन ऑफिस ऑफ हेड क्लाइमेट रिसर्च एंड सर्विसेज सर्विस इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन डिविजन पुणे अंडर आई एम बी अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ अवर साइंसेज He is Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics. His area of work is Aviation, Meteorological Instruments, AWS, ARG, Calibration of Sensors, Observatory Network, MET Sensors, Manufacturing in Workshop. He has 19 years experience in India MET Department. He has worked at various important uh, capacities, uh, just Cyclone Detection Radar Bhuj, AWS ARG Lab Pune. Airport Map Instrumentation Lab, Pune; IGI Airport, New Delhi; Surface Observation Network Calibration Lab, Workshop, Pune. So he has more than ten research papers as a co-author and author in peer-reviewed journals. So I invite uh, Dr. Uday Shinde to start his uh, le uh, lecture, and uh, uh, please raise this to your. Uh, and uh, and uh, audience to audience audience uh, you should ask uh, all the queries and other he will be very happy to answer your questions okay thank you thank you uh, dr savai sir ji good afternoon to all uh, my name is uday shinde and uh, as he is brief about my uh, introduction uh, i am working in the uh, surface system division pune and uh, basically Uh, we are manufacturing the meteorological sensors, and uh, we are also supplying to the sensors or and uh, meteorological instruments to the our uh, surface observatory net network, airports, all airports uh, across the India, and uh, radiation instruments, all AWS, ARG uh, instruments are there that we are uh, taking care of this uh, office. Just I will share the PPT and then we will start uh, our uh, basics of global observations topic. so is it visible to you yes sir it is visible sir okay okay so so okay so basically uh, this global observing system is uh, we are uh, concerned with the weather department uh, weather and climate department so meteorological department so basically we will uh, discuss today how the observation are taking uh, taking care and the taking place and uh, what are the instruments used to taking the observations uh, first of all i uh, will uh, introduce i will introduce some introduction portion of the our department uh, generally our headquarters is uh, at imd delhi uh, imd new delhi at lodi road and the uh, instrument division is uh, divided into two part one is the surface instrument division which is uh, at pune and other is upper air instrument division is at uh, delhi 
सर्फेस इंस्ट्रूमेंट डिविजन पुणे टेक केयर ऑफ दी ऑल सर्फेस इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑब्जर्वेटरीज इन ऑल दी एडब्ल्यू एस आर जी एयरपोर्ट नेटवर्क रेडिएशन नेटवर्क एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल यू बट इन अपर एयर इंस्ट्रूमेंट एट दिल्ली इट विल टेक केयर ऑफ रडार्स ऑल रडार्स वेदर रडार्स डॉपलर वेदर रडार्स जी पी एस सॉन्डेज इन पायलट बलून्स दैट इज पायलट बलून्स एंड जी पी एस सॉन्डे विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर दी अपर एयर ऑब्जर्वेशन विच इज हेल्पफुल इन दी एविएशन ऑपरेशन नाउ दी जस्ट वॉट इज द बेसिक ऑब्जर्वेशन इज द इवेल्युएशन ऑफ मेजरमेंट ऑफ वन और मोर मेट्रोलॉजिकल एलिमेंट्स तो मेट्रोलॉजिकल एलिमेंट्स मीन मेट्रोलॉजिकल पैरामीटर्स लाइक टेम्परेचर ह्यूमिडिटी रेनफॉल all uh, heavy wind direction wind speed all these meteorological uh, parameters are there that that is the measurement basically it is observation meteorological observation meteorological observation are either sensory or instrumental sensory means uh, uh, human has to uh, take the observation and uh, that is the sensory and uh, instrumental means uh, like, just like automatic weather station automatically you are getting the data from the instruments so there are two types of observations are there so uh, play in play, a place it means the evaluation of the one more meteorological elements is carried out regularly is called a meteorological observing station so one or more parameters are uh, you are observing then it is called the observatory the met observatory stations are classified under the following categories depending on the observations objective of the stations so synoptic observatory climatological observatory agrometeorological observatory and aviation meteorological observatories now there are four type, four kind of observations are there surface observations uh Actually, uh, this uh, observations uh, when we are taking at the uh, at observatory level, just like synoptic observation, every three hours observation you have to take and you have to transmit the data. And the telecommunication links is required. Data collection are subject to quality control before being disseminated to the users. So they all the data will be quality control. Means any error error data will be deleted. and uh, in this quality control will be taken care in the software end the observing the network observing stations are subject to regular inspection in order to ensure the high standard of the observational data so this data uh, will be uh, regularly inspect in, inspected by the our inspector section at the meteorological centers they will uh, take care of the inspection of the observatories under their jurisdiction the responsibility of imd is to uh, announcement of the instrumental network which is fundamental source of getting reliable data so in in its periodic maintenance imparting hands on training to national and international delegates regarding calibration standardization of the surface and upper air meteorological equipments becomes mandated for this departments so we are taking care of the uh, training importing regularly training importing to the uh, all the uh, indian airports in the navy uh, in the navy agencies and all other uh, international delegates also uh, coming w, as decommit body w this is the surface instrument division pune pune uh, basically they is have some uh, divisions are there so the, we have radiation networks uh, radiation data global radiation data in uh, in incoming out uh, long range radiation data these are they, these are taken by radiation observatories these are around 45 observatories in the uh, across the india observatory network as are there surface observatory which taking care of all basic uh, meteorological parameters like temperature humidity wind uh, wind and wind direction uh, rainfall this is the basically um, uh, observatory network sws are networks are high wind speed recorder basically it is uh, installed at the coastal station um, the high wind speed recorder will record the high uh, wind speed record wind speed data in case of any adverse weather like cyclone at the coastal station a uh, workshop unit is there uh, we, we have a, uh, at pune office uh, basically known as simla office uh, it, it have it is having a workshop unit manufacturing unit which uh, manufacture the all sensors uh, meteorological sensors here uh, then uh, calibration and supply whatever the instrument manufacture in the uh, meteorological uh, workshop they should be calibrated so we have calibration lab here i as we maintain uh, bi standard also and primary standards uh, Uh, we have, we are available at our uh, calibration lab then surface ozone networks also there uh, if a airport network also there more than 90 airports are uh, civil airports are there we are maintaining here and aws arg network also there, also there then aws is automatic weather station and arg means uh, automatic rain gauges so more than 700 plus aws station we have installed across the india and uh, another one for 400 projects is also going on uh so basically it will become 1100 aws in the imd network and we have uh, more than 1300 plus uh, automatic rain gauge stations our in, in our imd network 
so these are the surface observatories you know uh, i already discussed some uh, this red color are the basically concerned with the uh, surface observation agrimet observation aviation observation rainfall observation session radiation observation we already discussed so these are the basically parameters variables meteorological parameters uh, atmospheric pressure temperature humidity wind direction mean speed measurement of precipitation means rainfall solar radiation evaporation cloud base height and visibility these are rvr rvr uh, visibility is uh, concerned with the airports and cloud based side also require for the uh, uh, airport operation aviation operation so we will discuss uh, one by one that uh, parameters later on so this is the basically uh, our surface observatory uh, look like this uh, india meteorological department surface observatory and it has a single silver sunscreen and double silver sunscreen uh, single silver sunscreen having four, four thermometers and double silver sunscreen having some thermographs and automatic uh measuring instruments are uh, uh, autographic measuring instruments at uh, kept in the double c1 sunscreen this, this is the rainfall measuring instrument uh, automatically rainfall also uh, measures here so we will see one by one how it uh, observations will be, will be taken so pressure we will see pressure is uh, one of the atmospheric at any place uh, of the on the earth is the force exerted on unit area given surface by virtue of the weight of the air in the vertical column so at any place Uh, the weight of the air column on that particular place is called the pressure so mercury barometer is used for use for the measure, measurement of the pressure this i think portion we have already my my friend already discussed in the morning lecture i think mercury is used for the uh, measuring the uh, barom barometric uh, uh, pressure means means um, uh, pressure at that particular station the weight of the uh, weight of a vertical column of the mercury in the glass tube it will de it will de uh, demarks the uh, pressure in this in this level this is the pressure one one end of the this tube is closed and other end of this uh, tube is will be uh, open so the open open space open uh, portion will be taking care of the uh, pressure exerted by the air on that mercury column and mercury column will raise and that raising mercury color will be uh, reading read, read by that observer that is the uh, uh, that is particularly that uh, pressure on that particular station so now uh, as wmo recommended that the mercury is very hazardous to our human health and it is be it will be very uh, adverse impact on the human body so wmo world meteorological observer uh, organization recommend that ki mercury barometer should be phased out so we are uh, we are uh, we are working on that and we have purchased 200 uh, digital station barometer and across the india and, uh, and we have supplied it uh, now we are like recommending all the, uh, all the all the air force and, and naval station also not to use mercury barometers uh, now the digital barometer digital pressure sensor is now how it looks like this is the dsb a uh, digital pressure sensor it is a wall mount uh, instrument is there and it has one lcd screen so on the uh, on the lcd screen itself uh, it will show the uh, exact pressure value on that particular station so barrocrop digital barometer ptb 300 is the model number for that uh, sensor vesala sensor provides reliable pressure measurement in the wide range of applications it also provides the local graphical display and ptb 330 use the barrocrop sil uh, barrocrop silicon capacitive absolute sensor sensor is a resist uh, resistance to mechanical and thermal shocks and this sensors provide calculated output quantities like qfn qn just qfn qn is basically so station level pressure and mean sea level pressure it is useful these parameters are useful for the aviation operation so basically this is the capacitive sensor we know the capacitance is nothing but c is equal to epsilon a by d so epsilon is a, is a relative constant a is the area of the plate and d is the distance between two plates so here the distance between two plates is varying according to the atmospheric pressure so uh, that 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 varying of the plates is very minute and that can be picked up by the that uh, then the capacitance of uh, the capacitance changes and this in the variation in the capacitance is uh, given in the uh, the uh, capacitance will be converted again into the output uh, digital output like rs suited output and rs suited output will be connected to the some data logger or something but here in in this same sensor same sensor electronics is there and it will take care of the all this uh, all this uh, conversion of the capacitance to into the some digital form and it will also display on the lcd screen now air temperature is the basically definition is temperature is the condition which determine the direction of the net Uh, flow of the heat between two bodies so this is the basic uh, definition of temperature uh, it is the, the flow of heat from the one body to two bodies like that it's the temperature uh, meteorological department for the temperature measurement primarily are related to air uh, near our surface we are we are taking care of the uh, temperature only the near to our surface because we uh, 
we are uh, reporting the temperature for the uh, surface of the uh, near the ground so uh, this uh, temperature can be also soil temperature it can be uh, surface level of the sea level also temperature will be there so there are uh, so many temperatures we can uh, also measure with the help of uh, some instruments so instruments which measure the temperature is mercury thermometers we are using uh, just like in this in this slide okay, this is the mercury thermometers or this and one is the uh, one lower one with the liquid uh, uh, minimum thermometer is the alcohol the ethyl alcohol thermometer because ethyl alcohol has a lowest freezing point okay than the mercury so basically for the routine observation air temperature including the maximum minimum dry bulb wet bulb uh, temperatures uh, that we have already I, I think we have already discussed this uh, my, my friend has already discussed and thermometers uh, thermographs also mechanical instrument which which can also record the temperature automatically on the graph paper this is the graph paper and it will automatically record the tem uh, temperatures uh, by the help of ink pen recorder so this is the basically this is the uh, horizontal rod is the pen arm and in the at the tip of this uh, rod we have to uh, we have to pour ink and the automatically this clock drum will rotate uh, for the 24 hours the charts having where vertical lines are hours lines and for uh, horizontal lines are the temperature lines. So uh, when uh, so uh, anybody can uh, anybody can also uh, locate that at what time what the temperature. So uh, these vertical slides are the hour slides, hour slide uh, lines, and horizontal lines are the temperature lines. So automatically this uh, temperature is recorded on the autographic chart. But how it is recorded? It is uh, recorded because of the sensing element. The sensory element is having biometric strip is there having two different. Uh, uh, different metals having different co uh, co uh, coefficient of the temperatures. So the different coefficient of temperature have different expansion of the uh, this. And also these two metals are uh, in invar and the uh, bronze. The invar consists of nickel, iron, and bronze. These two metals are uh, made up of this strip, and this strip has some helical helical shape. And one end is of the helical strip, strip is fixed, and another is end of this. Uh, a uh, helical strip is open and it is attached to the, some mechanical assembly. And whenever the, the characteristics of this uh, strip is that, the, whenever the temperature varies, means temperature increase, that uh, in, that increase the shape of that uh, that uh, helical string. So that uh, small uh, contribution or elongation of this uh, expansion of this uh, helical string made up of two metals, it will be uh, captured by this mechanical assembly from lever assembly and amplified by the mechanical assembly small variation and it will be attached to the pain arm. This is the horizontal pain arm and it will record the uh, reading of the uh, record on the chart paper automatically on the graph paper. So this is the basically working of the uh, thermograph. Uh, now how the how this uh, thermo the temperature can be uh, recorded uh, electric electronically. So there are uh, uh, some probes there. So we have uh, PT100 is the sensor for the temperature platinum 100. Why it is called 100? Because it resistance shows 100 uh, ohm at the zero degree Celsius. That's why it is called PT100 sensor, platinum 100 sensor. So platinum 100 sensor has property. It linearly increases the temperature when the temperature increases, resistance increases. So it is linearly increasing. So this uh, how it measure this uh, range is given to the uh, temperature means uh, decide decide by temperature. The temperature range will be minus 40 degree to plus 60 degree. So this output is uh, output is shown in the uh, given in the temp, uh, sorry temp, uh, resistance, but that resistance also um, can be converted into zero to one volt. So zero to one volt will be corresponds to minus forty to plus sixty degree. So whenever the uh, temperature rises, it will also rise the uh, corresponding voltages. Zero to one volt means zero to one thousand millivolt. So one thousand millivolt correspond to to plus 60 degrees Celsius and zero correspond to minus 40 degrees Celsius. So then I, if I ask one question, small question to you, if I get output at 500 millivolt, then what will be the corresponding temperature? Are you listening to me? Shall I repeat the question? Sorry. Hello. Sir, we are listening, tell me. Uh -huh. Just a small, a small question I ask you. Uh, this, uh, if you are uh, electronics background or, or some uh, technical background, so anybody can also answer. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, probe is giving uh, given the temperature. So PT hundred is basically gives the temperature, uh, and it is the resistance. Uh, uh, basically, it, it increases the resistance when temperature increases. And uh, I have what I have told you: minus forty degree to plus sixty degrees correspond to zero to one volt. Okay. 
minus 40 degree to plus 60 degree zero correspond to zero to one volt. Zero to one volt. One volt means 1000 millivolt. So if I if I consider zero is minus 40 degree and uh, 1000 millivolt is a plus 60 degree. Okay, then output if I if I get the output of 500 millivolt means exactly middle. So what will be the corresponding temperature? It corresponds to temperature will be the 10 degree because minus 40 is there. So plus uh, plus 10 degree will be the corresponding temperature for the 500 millivolt output. Okay, this is the very simple uh, theory behind the how how the uh, temperature can be measured electro, elect, electronically. Okay, so no issue. Then uh, uh, gradually, if you get 600 millivolt, you will get uh, 20 degree Celsius. If you get uh, 700 millivolt, you will get 30 degree and and so on. So plus 60 degree, you will get exactly 1000 millivolt. So this is the measurement of temperature with the help of this electronic uh, instrument. So now we will uh, now we will move to the uh, uh, humidity part. So this is the I have already told you this is the combined sensor. It is having PT100 sensor as well as one humidity sensor also there. The humidity sensor is basically thin polymer is the is the sensor basically to you to measure the humidity. Thin polymer has a property. It is just like a tissue paper and it has a property to absorb the moisture from the atmosphere. Humidity is nothing but the moisture from the, on, on, from the uh, atmosphere. So thin polymer has a basic uh, property that it will absorb the moisture from the atmosphere out of air and its electrical permittivity changes mean dielectric medium of this uh, capacity. This is basically capacitive sensor. This uh, PT100 is a resistive sensor and this uh, humidity sensor thin polymer is capacitive sensor. So basically that uh, dielectric medium is nothing but your thin polymer. So whenever the uh, whenever the thin polymer absorbs the moisture from the atmosphere, your dielectric medium will changes. Dielectric medium will changes, and you know capacitance is nothing but epsilon a by d. So here epsilon is changing, means um, numerator part is changing. So whenever the uh, when whenever the humidity is more, capacitance also more. So like that because it is epsilon is the numerator part. So C is equal to directly proportional to uh, our uh, dielectric medium, electrical permittivity epsilon. So this uh, epsilon means that uh, uh, dielectric medium is connected to this thin polymer. Whenever the temp whenever the moisture uh, uh, in the atmosphere increases or decreases, uh, cutting root capacitance also increases or decreases. And this capacitance we are again converting into with the help of signal conditioning signal conditioner uh, in the inside the electronics small electronics. It will give again the output in the zero to one volt. Okay, with the help of these wires, you will get the output in the zero to one volt. So basically, we are measuring the humidity 0 to 100 percent. So 0 to 100 percent is uh, corresponds to 0 to 1 volt. So again, I, I, I'm asking a small question. When I got when I get 500 millivolt at the output of this two from the from the humidity part. So what will what, what will the hum, corresponding humidity? It will be the exactly 50 percent exactly middle. So I, I already told you 0 to 100 percent humidity. Humidity always measure in the unit of uh, percentage. OK, so 0 to 100 percent humidity is equals to 0 to 1 volt. So if that wire will give you one volt at the maximum means one, if you get one volt, then you will get 100% humidity. If you get zero volt, you will get zero percent humidity. So at the middle, when you get 500 millivolt, you will get 50% humidity. Likewise, if you get 600 millivolt, you will get 60% humidity. If you get 700 millivolt, you will get 70% humidity. So in this way, the electro electronically, this uh, humidity also measure. Okay. So uh, humidity also we have already discussed this uh, humidity is nothing but a water vapor and psychrometer also device which uh, which also which give the humidity uh, mechanically means it has a uh, one dry bulb thermometer and one is a wet bulb thermometer wet bulb is always kept keep in the wet we have to pour, pour pour some water on the bulb of that mercury and, and we have to make wet and uh, the dry bulb is uh, always keep dry and this with the help of this handle we have to rotate some five six times and you have to and then after that equilibrium uh, is gone get if you're getting equilibrium then we are taking the reading of the dry bulb and thermometer and, and uh, bed bulb thermometer so after noting the uh, dry bulb and thermometer readings uh, after uh, after rotating this uh, psychrometer so there is one hygrometric table is there so with that of the hygrometric table you will get the automatically you will get the humidity so this is the traditional way of to measure the humidity also instead of again one uh, one hygrograph is there here hygrograph that also traditional way to measure the humidity by this instrument is manufactured in our workshop also in pune division and this is the uh, uh, measurement of humidity with the above human hair so human hair has a property to uh, elongate uh, increase in the length 
when the uh, humidity is more when humidity is less the human hair will be contact so this uh, from this uh, property of the human hair is is here taken in the in this uh, in the instrument and this is the hook is there this is the human this is the thread bundles of the uh, human hairs and in the middle of the hair it will be uh, a hook to be the one uh, one hooking uh, system and that hook will be uh, tight because hook is because of the tightening of the hair so whenever the humidity increases that uh, that uh, elongation will be occur and the, that hook will be loosen then that uh, whatever the loosen and tighten this uh, property of this human hair will be amplified by this mechanical assembly lever lever assembly and it will be connected to the horizontal this rod this horizontal uh, pen arm will be there in, in the tip of the uh, pen arm there we will pour the ink and this self driven mechanism chart will be there this this is the chart on the um, on, on the clock drum and this will be self driven and automatically it will just like all clock it will it will rotate and in on which in in which hours uh, in which hour what are the humidity will be it will be recorded automatically on the graph paper so this is the automatic way of to measure the humidity with the help of mechanical instrument with the help of human hairs and so capacity which is we have already discussed this thin polymer it is used in the uh, AWS automatic weather station and um, now uh, wind wind is the also a very important factor for the uh, for the surface observation even in the wind is very important factor in the aviation operation because you know aviation in, in aircraft is always landing and takes place uh, with the uh, uh, opposite of the wind direction always so wind is the moment of the relative moment of the surface of the air, earth wind is a, it is the air in the motion nothing but the, it is the air in the motion in it it, uh, it generates refer to the broad or uh, organized horizontal flow of uh, air you can say so for routine meteorological application wind is considered only as a two dimensional vector you know there is a two dimensional vector it is has a magnitude as well as direction wind has it, that's why it is a two dimensional then uh, it, um, it affects the, uh, the the wind also can be affect trees building so trophography of this of surface observation should be free free from the tall buildings and the uh, trees also to get the exact measurement of the wind but wind uh, wind measurement will be always done at the 10 meter height from the uh, from the ground level agl above the ground level so wind can be measured about 10 meter from the ground so this is the cup anemometer which which record the uh, wind, you know, wind speed of the uh, ground uh, surface wind speed you can uh, say uh, 10 meter uh, about the 10 meter uh, wind speed will be recorded by this mechanical instrument it is called cup counter anemometer it is just like our bike speedometer it is give the it, it gives the reading in the kilometer per hour after that we have to convert it into the knots because in meteorological purpose uh, units for the wind is the knots so the, uh, this is the simple mechanism cup counter anemometer already this is the dying pressure, pressure tube anemometer it will give directly wind direction and wind speed directly on the chart paper so now electrical why, uh, how electron, electronically wind speed is measure, uh, measured so basically uh, these are the four uh, ultrasonic wind sensor you are, you are using and basically there are four sensors are there four transducers are there and kept in the north east west south direction these four transducers are kept in the north south west east direction and uh, whenever the uh, and, all, and and they are all, they are, they are they're just uh, whenever when you put on the supply a 12 hour supply out for this ultrasonic wind, wind sensor so it will send the ultrasonic wind to, towards the each other so it will send directly it will send the some ultrasonic waves to the each each sensors so for example now uh, north we, we will send to the south and east east will be sent to the west uh, transducer so if the one wind the, then the exact time of the fl uh, fly, flight here taking care t1 t2 so t1 is a you know because t1 is a already uh, we are sending the pulses from audio pulses from the one transducer to another transducer but but if the question wind is there if wind is flowing in this direction so if the wind is flowing means uh, another one speed is will be added to the that uh, uh, audio frequency audio audio pulses so audio pulses naturally it will reach in the uh, earlier time rather than the, the the pulses which is transmitting from the this that this transducer to the this transducer so this is the timing is time when the when wind wind direction is uh, is a uh, parallel to this uh, that uh, wind uh, already audio pulses are there so there that wind will be increases and the opposite direction the wind will be uh, the time from this uh, time to reach the for pulses from the this transistors uh, to this transistor will be reduced so this t1 t2 we are getting here you can see see is the uh, see, see is the uh, audio 
uh, sound frequency and v is the you have to calculate the frequency so in the direction will minus the, the direction will be minus when the opposite will be there this t2 uh, when the v is there it, it is a plus when the that wind is direction wind direction is is the same as the t1 then it will be plus and the wind direction is opposite t2 t2 this t1 it will be the negative so with the help of this t1 and t2 uh, we are calculating the um, this wind speed by this formula l by 2 l is the distance between two transducers and t1 t2 this the this the v will be calculated uh, automatically wind speed velocity of the flow so this is the basic principle to calculate the wind speed now we will see rainfall how the rainfall also basic parameter for the meteorological rainfall will, will be calculated uh, whatever the rainfall precipitated precipitation on the ground um, will be accumulated in the uh, in the jar and this is a traditional way to measure the rainfall and uh, whatever the rainfall collected in the jar inside the jar it will be it will be poured into the this uh, rain measuring glass and this glass is having some markings in mm 10 mm 20 mm 30 mm like this and whatever the rainfall collected in the jar uh, in the in the 24 hours generally we uh, measure the rainfall in 24 hours with 3 gm to the 3 gm to 3 gm is at 30 am morning so the observable observer will come to the uh, to the observatory and he will he will uh, take out this jar and uh, whatever the rainfall is collected in the jar he will pour in the sim simple in the glass and he will uh, take the re reading of the um, rain and he will report the exact reading in the that um, form for in, in the format so this is the basically area of this collecting area is different uh, sometimes to 1.2 mm uh, diameter is also is there sometimes 1.5 1.6 mm diameter is there so for that area 200 square meter area will be there so on that basis this calculation will be there on that basis this jar will be sorry this uh, rmg will be designed on the base in the on the area collecting area and this um, rain measuring ball will be dependent on each other area increases this dimension of this rmg rain measuring glass also increases okay so this is the second picture is the automatic way to measure the rainfall so whatever the rainfall collected in the in this funnel type this uh, opening area and here one you see here one one uh, one, one pipe is there so whatever the rainfall is collected in in the funnel shape so it will be in, in inside this uh, one pipe is there and one chamber is there inside the chamber is there and chamber has some float so whenever the water is uh, enter into the float the, the in the chamber the float will be uh, full float height will be increases but the float height will be again it is connected to this vertical rod and vertical rod is also connected to the one horizontal pen arm and the horizontal pen arm as the as the float increases this also in, it will uh, will come up and the and the exact reading on the uh, chart will be recorded on the on this rainfall chart so uh, this this total this bo both ordinary method org method and this self recording method is al always uh, come in the same values so now this is the electronic electronically measurement of the rainfall how this how this conventional uh, conventional measure can be again uh, sense, uh, sensor method can be instrumental method so now how how this made, uh, instrument works we will uh, discuss now this is called tipping bucket rain, rain, rain gauge uh, rain gauge is there and it has a uh, two buckets one one this is the one bucket small bucket it has a 0.5 mm of height of the uh, water water and uh, and the same same will be here also so one one uh, bucket is always in receiving position so this is the enclosure of this uh, uh, total uh, tipping bucket rain gauge and whenever the water uh, enters in this way in the, in the into the this uh, uh, tipping bucket rain gauge it will be uh, it will be through the funnel shape pipe it will be again uh, accumulated in the uh, this receiving bucket so after the filling receiving bucket after 0.5 mm of water it will tilt down it will tilt like this tilt down so it will tilt down and one, this will this bucket will be again in the receiving position so in this way so tilting mechanism will be there that's why it is called tipping bucket uh, uh, rain, rain, rain gauge is called so one one you remember one bucket is always in receiving position and um, after filling that 0.5 mm water it will tilt it will tilt and it will drain out their water and with that uh, another bucket will be in receiving position so one tilt will uh, one tilt will generate the one uh, magnetic pulses one, one one here one sensor is there magnetic grid switch is there so it will sense that tilt and it will generate one pulse magnetic pulse so one pulse is nothing but 0.5 mm of water so in this way if you get 10 pulses means you are you are getting uh, 5 mm of water so this pulse this pulses will be uh, counted by the uh, counted by the some counter mechanism is there 
uh, in case of data logger in AWS, data logger, you have, we have to connect this sensor, two wires are there. So it will, it will only record the pulse, magnetic pulse, pulses. So pulse, one pulse is nothing but 0.5 mm of water because they design like that. So 0.5 mm of water, nothing but the 15.7 cc of water. So 15.7 cc means cubic cubic volume, cubic centimeter of this uh, volume of this water. 15.7 exactly. If you pour in the in, in the bucket in that bucket, it will tilt down. Okay. So this is a calibration also is required for this tilting bucket. If you, you, you have to pour the exactly 15.7 cc of water to cal calibrate that uh, instrument. So this is the electronic way to measure the rainfall uh, in, automatically. Uh, so now the uh, visibility factor also the uh, very important i told you in aviation uh, visibility is very important and uh, uh, in the aviation uh, you know you, you know in the fox season also in north india uh, aviation operation is hampered because of the affected because of the fog and uh, pilot want to know what is the exact visibility condition at the airport and uh, there is some criteria is given to the for every airport and, and 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 that way category of the airport also categorized i will i will show the category of this airport will be in the next slide but this visibility factor is very important it is the defined as the greatest distance at which the object can be seen and recognized by the observer with, with the normal eyesight under the normal condition of the daylight illumination so this is the simple definition of the uh, visibility means a human can get, human can observe uh, recognize that object in any object with the say, with the normal eyesight condition and the daylight illumination. So this is the simple um, definition of the visibility, uh, meteorological visibility. So distance at which the some object can be seen depends on the size, shape of the and uh, size, slight of the observer, sight of the observers. So besides the transparency of the atmosphere, if the if the atmosphere is clear, then you will see the object from the far distance also. If the if the transparency means if, if, if any particles are there, uh, dust particles or rain particles or some fog particles are there, hydrometers are there. So it will re, it will reduce the visibility, transparency of the atmosphere. Then you will you will not see that object in the clearly. Means you have to uh, you will not clear uh, you you the distance uh, means. That that will be the object will be blur, or you will not able to see the in, in case of dense fog also. Even in 50 meter distance, in the in case of dense fog, you will not see the object any object. So in that case, the, this visibility comes to the picture. Now uh, anybody uh, in the on the runway side means when the aircraft operation is there, so nobody will go there in the to take to take the observation on the runway side. So somehow how they then uh, instrumentally that uh, uh, visibility should be should be should be should come to the. Airport air, air, air traffic controller room. So that is the instrument is is a design to measure the transparency of the atmosphere. That that instrument is called transmissometer, and it gives the uh, visibility values. Uh, in case of aviation operation, some MOR, meteorological optical range, and RVR, runway visual range, is very important. I will show you in the next slide. This is the RVR, a runway visual. Uh, it is a runway visual range. Is uh, is there? Uh, it is uh, nothing but the instrumental visibility and uh, runway visual and because it is it's put on the runway that instrument is also always put on the runway so this is called a runway a runway visual range so which basically depend it is light light mechanism so uh, when the it is defined as the maximum distance in which in the direction of the takeoff of landing at which the runway or the specified light lights on the mark are, are marker denoting it it can be seen from the position above the specific point uh, on uh, on its central line uh, at the height of the corresponding to the average eye level of the pilot it turns down means at the particular distance above the runway for for, for example 5 meter uh, above the runway the pilot should see the clearly see the runway markings means runway lights and runway markings and uh, this is this, this is nothing but isn't it is known as the rvr uh, runway visual range means how mean how that uh, after that uh, uh, point 5 meter uh, uh, above the runway when it is landing so he, he will he should clearly see the runway markings and runway central line and runway edge lights also so that is the light this rvr is uh, concerned with the again light okay so that rvr is calculated instrumentally by transmissometer and that rvr is uh, nothing but the, the calculation is something some some parts involves for the calculation of rvr and the, the scientist is known as a uh, allard's allard's law that based on the allard's law the rvr is calculated so this is the basically the street transmission meter we are uh, we have deployed more than 50 transmission meter across the all indian uh, civil airports which is maintained by imd india meteorological department so this is the distimate nal makes instrument nal bangalore makes instruments 
and they it has it is nothing but the uh, lamps la, lamp side means transmission trans, transmitter and receiver is there transmitter will send the light pulses uh, in the direction uh, to the receiver and uh, it is the this transmitter and receiver is apart from 30 meter base length this is called base length b and this uh, mm, whatever the transparency of this atmosphere in the between the 30 meter it will reach the right if the, there is a clear weather it, 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 there is no any particles there is no any disturbing uh, particles uh, in the, in between that transmitter and receiver so so whatever the light you have um, you have transmitted it will reach to the receiver maximum amount of intensity of light will be received by the receiver and you will get some uh, values it is called rvr values or mr values calculated by the formulas I already, I already told you this a large law will be calculated the rvr and one blm is required blm is background light monitor is required and this electronics is there so receiving electronics and this is transmitter electronics because we need a leds uh, led is the light here and it required 5 volt to glow that uh, led lamp uh, again this is the base link between the two uh, transmitter and receiver and uh, one vi instrument concept modular modular electronics uh, this is the some ni software is there a national instrument software with the help of uh, that uh, uh, that instrument uh, that instrument will be uh, that uh, rvr will be calculated okay and rmr and rvr will be calculated instrumentally and uh, by this uh, alert line uh, cosmodius law okay the system facilitated automatic measurement of rvr 50, 50 meter to 3 3 kilometer okay and mor is 10 meter to 10 uh, 10 kilometers so this rvr is uh, can be calculated up to 3 kilometer and mor can be calculated uh, up to 10 kilometer so it is required by the WMM is World Meteorological Organization and ICAO is International Civil Aviation Organization. After this two, three kilometer or two kilometer RVR is not reported because the pilot is doesn't require the uh, that RVR more than two kilometer or three kilometer. So the, basically this RVR is calculated with the help of three factors. This is the transparency of atmosphere, whatever the light intensity you are receiving at the receiving end. This is the transparency of atmosphere, background luminance, background light. What are the background light means? Uh, uh, there are the background lights are divided into four parts. Some three lights, normal daylight, bright day, uh, sunshine light, and night. This four four background lights also taken into parts. This is taken take care by this a BLM soft small instrument, which is also having photodiode. The photodiode will uh, will 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 measure the uh, uh, background light, and it will give it, it will give into the formula. This is the formula, and this formula it will be fitted, and it will give the automatically this R is the uh, RVR values, uh, runway visual rain values. So we will not go in detail with the formula, but you remember three, three, uh, three factors are required to ca calculate the RVR. One is the transparency of atmosphere, other is the background luminance, and other is the runway light intensity. So runway light intensity also a very important factor, and it is, uh, it will, it is uh, runway light intensity, this factor is given by the Air Force Authority of India, and they will give the one, um, two wires to our instrument and it will give the some percentage that light intensity so it will nothing but it will give some voltages but in, in form percentage so for example 50 percent light it slides of, of the runway lights 90 percent light like that it will be uh, automatically we are getting from the authority of india and that three parameters will be fed into the that uh, cpu and cpu will calculate the uh, calculate the rvr with the help of this alert law and these are all, all these basic parameters and now the last uh, uh, basically parameter is uh, laser silometer. Silometer is a nothing but the instrument which which gives the lowest uh, height of the lowest cloud of the lowest cloud. Means there is if this cloud is there, lowest cloud. So you, the instrument is there. This silometer instrument it has a transmitter and receiver. This is the transmitter and this is the receiver. So it will send the laser pulses towards the uh, sky. And whenever the cloud is there, it will again reflect it back to the receiver. And the time which is uh, coming uh, time is uh, some two times are involved in here here one time is for transmitter and one time for reflected times so they, they that's why these two factories come into the picture and in this formula h is equal to ct by 2 uh, the height of this uh, h can be calculated how height of this uh, cloud base of the cloud can be calculated with the help of the cylinder so this electronics is there in inside this uh, cylinder it will again convert it into the some rs to the uh, digital form and that rs to the form will be that data will be transmitted from runway side to the ATC side with the help of um, some communication systems are there in the on the runway side. One the underground cables are there, which is given by the author, authority of India. That with the help of underground cables, 
we are getting the data from runway side to ATC side. And, uh, and another mode of communication is Wi-Fi modems. So wireless modems also there. So one wire wireless modem you have to install on runway side and another uh, wireless modem you have to install on ATC side. So the both communication we are maintaining because one if one communication fails, other will take care. So that data, meteorological data, which is very vital for the uh, aviation operation will, be on, will not be lost. Okay, so this is the basic principle, uh, working principle of laser accelerometer. The transmitter in this accelerometer is nothing but the gallium arsenide semiconductor. It's a laser diode. When the light pulse is penetrated uh, in the cloud, some part of the light energy will be reflected back, and the reflected light is received by the photodiode in the receiver. After analog to digital conversion and the filtering of the echo signal, microprocessor can calculate the time between the transmission and the reception of the pulses. So, for example, that if you if you put that in the formula. For example, the time if you have to put time only. So because uh, you, if you put the time if if you if you put the time 16 microsecond, so the cloud height will be you will be get, get 2400 meter. Because C you, you know the C C is the velocity of the light and T A T uh, you have to time you have to uh, calculate here. So this time is uh, involved two 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 paths. One path is this. Uh, Transmission is, is this path is from the downward time based transmission. So time you have if you get time you will get h height of the uh, base of the lower cloud. This is the simple working uh, of this kilometer. Uh, these are the meteorology instrument we have which are deployed on the surface observatory. This is the thermometer screen. This is the anemometer. This is the wind 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 direction wind direction instrument. This is the ordinary range gauge. This is the sun screen. These are the instruments also the sunshine recorders. These are the radiation instruments, which is the OP, open, open pan, evapometer. Okay. So these are the departmental observatories in the, in, across the India. We have IMD has a departmental observatories around 206 across the India. These are the stations. This is the North departmental observatories, uh, just like uh, agriculture, some universities are taking care of their requests to install some instruments, meteorological instruments for their students, academic, academic studies. So they are the non-departmental. So they are the uh, around some total 535 uh, observatories are there. Now we will see met met aviation meteorological instrument. So basically we have studied two instruments already. That is transmission meter and accelerometer. Now we will see one by one uh, uh, what were the instruments. So now first of all, uh, the, I have already told you the category of the airport also divided with the help of this uh, RVR values. This, on, on which uh, RVR values the category of the airport this category is decided. So, for example, up to 500, 550 meter uh, visibility is given to the category one airport. It means above this uh, uh, visibility is there 550 RVR. Then only you can land in the category one airport. So, category two airport, the pilot can be allowed to land uh, up to the 350 meter uh, RVR is there. Okay, because the instrument facility is increasing as the category of the uh, category of the airport is improving. The instrument also instrument facilities at that airport also increasing. Means you can see, imagine the category one airport is a is a small airport. Uh, like uh, you can weekly or uh, fortnightly one flight is there or two flights two flights are there. So this is the small runway also runway runway length are the small. So instrument instruments also small. So they have given some uh, there because of lack of instruments uh, they have given some criteria visibility criteria. So according to that category has, has been categorized. So category two airport is up to the 350 meter RVR values is there. They, 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 are, they are defined by ICAO, ICAO itself. Okay. This category three AB, three A airport is there up to 200 meter he can land. And uh, in category three B airports up to 200 to 50 meter uh, can, he can be land with the help of support of the all instruments also supporting to him while landing. But category three C airport is a zero meter miss. No limitations for the pilot, but uh, as the safety of the passengers, uh, we are not considering this uh, 3C is a category of the airport because if you depends on the all the all the uh, decisions is given to the pilot, he can he can land at any uh, at any circumstances any bad weather also. But this is not happening in India because of the passengers' life is concerned. So category 3C air, C airport is not in India. Only category 3B airport is there. So uh, basically, IJ Airport is uh, in uh, uh, Delhi, New Delhi is the category B airport. It equipped with the all instruments, meteorology instruments, even uh, instrument landing systems are also there, ILS system. So uh, again, uh, I am uh, telling you the category of the airports is divided uh, depends on the facility of the air uh, instruments. Okay, so instruments are current weather instruments. The current weather instruments giving the all parameters, meteorological parameters means runway runway conditions. 
uh, at this 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 uh, this uh, flight you will clear this is the runway you can say this is the runway and this is the dot dot is the central runway line and uh, our met observe uh, our met equipments are here this is the uh, met park you can say uh, meteorological uh, land they are giving for the met purpose uh, this authority and in india and uh, they will allot some land to us for deploying the instruments so here in the uh, for example side is uh, nowadays we are taking the site site is 10 meter by 50 meter because transmission meter is there 30 meter already base length is there so that's why we are getting we are taking the 50 meter uh, site 10 meter by 50 meter site we are uh, taking from the uh, authority of india so the runway site so where this site is located this slide is located uh, 120 meter uh, away from the within the, uh, 120 meter from the central runway line and uh, 300 meter 300 meter from the threshold of the runway this end of the runway so uh, this this uh, instrument has been we have to install the instrument uh, within that uh, limit within that uh, this uh, uh, distance 120 meter and 300 meter 120 meter from the central runway line and 300 meter from the end of the runway so this side dimension is 10 meter by 50 meter so in that side dimension only we have to install all instruments so and this weather weather data this all parameter data will be reached to the ATC side. So the, our ATC side, our people is sitting there in the in the uh, ATC room. One one room room is allotted for us meteorological people. They will prepare the met report, metar, and they will transmit every half an hourly. So every half an hourly they have to report the uh, prepare the report, uh, and they have to disseminate this report to the authority of India people, and they will uh, that uh, ATC people will always be will in contact with the pilots which is uh, around the uh, around the range of that pilot so so when the pilot is uh, come come into the range of that uh, um, pilot is come 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 into the range of that uh, atc people they will communicate that data meteorological data to the pilot and in this way they will he, he will uh, land safely okay so this is the basically uh, instrument this is a 10 meter mast is there because you know uh, wind is wind is always measure uh, above the 10 meter so that's why the 10 meter uh, 10 meter mast is installed at the runway side so above that 10 meter one wind direction and one speed wind speed and wind direction sensors are there and above uh, 2 meter from the agl above ground level uh, 1.5 or 2 meter uh, temperature sensor is there this is the temperature sensor and this is the enclosure box enclosure box is uh, uh, accommodated with the pressure sensor and all digital uh, digitizer which is logging the data from the all sensor also some communication system batteries solar panels are also there big in case of a ac main phase it will work on the battery so these are the basically uh, runway instruments and uh, this is the instruments uh, facility available at the category category as per the category increases you can, you can see the visible uh, this instrument also increases so in case of current weather instrument to uh, either end but both end uh, category 3 we are airport either end tools current current weather instrument is required visibility sensor means transmission meter is three required in the mid of this mid of the uh, uh, mid of the runway also one visibility sensor is required because sometimes runway length is more so runway uh, in case of ij airport like uh, 2911 runway number is there so that is more than five kilometers so in that case in mid of the runway also uh, one visibility sensor they will request us to install and in this way they, they require three uh, transmission meters to report the RVR values, visibility RVR. The, there are two kilometers required for the uh, either ends, and uh, it will give the exact height of the lowest base cloud. Okay. So these are the instruments I have told you. So this is the black diagram of the CWS. Current weather instrument system is the black. This is the black diagram. It will connect the wind wind which will, which will give the wind direction. Optical nanometer will give the wind speed. ATR is air temperature humidity sensor will give the combined sensor which we have already discussed resistive sensors and capacitive sensor it will give the temperature and humidity value the wires will be connected into the data logger some signal amplification is there inside the data logger and all the sensors will be pressure sensor will be connected here and all this um, data log after logging the data it will be again transmitted to the mbr with the help of wireless communication and land land communication so their data logger is having also some slave displays because they are requ requesting us to more uh, to to place more displays uh, along the in the in the building ATC building. So we have we have facilities are land in the in in case of land connection with the above switch we are we are providing the some monitors to them for the monitoring the data. So this is the potentiometric unit. This is a simple uh, potentiometer to to measure the wind direction. This is the wind direction. It, it denotes south, west, north, 
this direction is there the rods are there and this way when the wind is flow this wind vane will be also move and that uh, in the inside this body this potentiometer is there potentiometer is a value this uh, along the circumference of the potentiometer 0 to 0 to 10k value is there total value is the 10k 10, 10 kilo ohm value is there and in in between this notch is there the notch so inside the notch this vertical vertical uh, shaft is there the vertical shaft is fixed in this notch and whenever this uh, wind vane moves this also moves so this also rotate and in this way internally even some resistance will be connected internally some one resistance will be connected the pointer is there it also moves in internally so whenever this wind uh, wind direction shows that internal uh, resistance will be coming to picture so the wire these two wires will be will give 0 to 10 volt maximum so 0 to 360 degree because we are direction is measuring in 360 degree so 0 to 360 degree is correspond to the 0 to 10k value so here 0 to 360 degree direction is correspond to the 0 to 10k value so this i already told you the circumference of this uh, potentiometer is 10k total so if this is the north this is the zero if you consider this is the zero value or some uh, value is there zero or uh, uh, 0.5 uh, ohm is there or zero which is considered zero is there and total after this uh, half you half of this uh, half of this potentiometer so what is the value of the heart half of the potentiometer exactly 10k ka half it is 5k so it will be it will show here 5k so it will show here in the if the if the one if the three fourth is there it will show 7.5k if the if this direction is there in this direction one fourth one fourth of the 10k is uh, 2.5k so to here you will get to 2.5k so 2.5k will indicate north direction uh, sorry uh, east direction is 90 degree 2.5k indicate 90 degree so likewise 5k you will indicate 180 degree 180 degree south direction so this west direction means to south 270 degree 270 degree will uh, will give you the output register uh, output is 7.5k so 7.5k when you get so it will show in the data logger 270 degree means history direction then when you get here 10k or full 10k or zero so you will get 360 degree means north direction so in this way the direction is measured in the uh, in the industry wso so, so, so this wind vane will be connected this wind vane will be connected to the data logger so we are getting only the resistance value from 10 0 to 10k here so this is the cup anemometer optical anemometer the time is over i think next lecture is at 430 so okay okay audience has any questions they may ask okay within 5 minutes i will conclude because this is very important parameter continue 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 thank you continue Thank you. Continue. So, uh, optical anemometer basically we are getting, uh, we are getting for the uh, for the calculation of wind speed. So, this optical anemometer having, uh, there, there are three cups are there rotating whenever this wind speed is there. The vertical shaft will be connected in the three, uh, so 120 degree apart from these cups are apart from this connected internally. And one vertical shaft is connected internally into the that uh, rotating cups. So, this uh, vertical shaft will again connected to this chopping. Uh, this sorry this uh, teeth, tooth uh, plate she means the teeth plate means it is but cut uh, particularly in the from some distance is cut because why it is cutting i will tell you uh, in some times because this circuit is there this circuit this small circuit is there electronic circuit and it is having some uh, transmitter and receiver this this is the transmitter means ir ir light will be there always and this is the receiver this is the photo diode is there this is the photo transistor is there and this is the ir diode is there infrared diode just like our remote control uh, light is there that is the ir light because it is not visible to you so this is the infrared light is there and this this is transmitter and this is receiver so in between the gap is there in between the, the this this plate is this plate is placed in between this like this in between transmitter and receiver this plate is placed in uh, like this so that when the when this uh, when this rotate according to the wind speed it will chop the light it will the chop the light and the when chopping is light will be there and it will gen generate the one pulses will be generated square pulses will be generated so one one chopping one one pulse so there is a uh, time time is involved so whenever the you will get in the time one pulses you you will get uh, some number of pulses will be there that pulses will be counted by the counter ic and uh, that uh, and that 5 volt pulses will be again uh, maintained by the Smith trigger IC and later it might have microcontroller which directly gives the output of the wind direction in RS32 forms. So RS32 form IC is there, this IC will take care of the conversion of the from this analog value to the digital value and you are getting the output 
in the two, uh, three, uh, sorry rs to the due to format okay so what is very simple fun function is there when the cup rotate vertical shop will rotate vertical shop is connected to this plate plate will rotate plate will chop the light and which the chop light will be will be generated pulses that pulses will be counted by the counter ic and that pulses will be maintained by 5 volt and that uh, microcontroller will take care that calculation of the wind speed so that's a ATRS sensor we already discussed. Pressure sensor also we already discussed. This is capacity sensor, but it is uh, the plate of the, um, this is the vent is there. The plate of the capacitor will be moved and according to the movement of the plate of the capacitance, the capacitance will change. That capacitance will be again converted into the, into the uh, digital form uh, like isolated form and it will give the pressure values directly into the this, uh, this LCD screen. So this is the pressure measurement. Digital, digital sensor pressure measurement and this is a capacitance based uh, um, uh, digital sensor and it will uh, again connected to the, the digitizer which is uh, used in the aviation operation. So these are the digitizer, this is logger, uh, this place in the runway side, this is placed in the ATC side, these are the um, cable modems, uh, this cable modem is a transmitter, this cable modem is used as a receiver because some 5, five to 6 kilometer, 10 kilometer underground cables are there from run runway to ATC side, so that data should not be lost. So that's why the amplification will be there because because of for the amplification purpose, this cable modem is using to amplify the data and it will receive in the uh, ATC side. This is the slave slave display which which will shows only wind direction 0 90 and it is the wind speed for the um, ATC ATC room. They are keeping this small display to uh, for showing the wind winds. Okay, so this is the combined sense combined screen, which is will be which will be which IMD will provide to the ATC people and admit people to observe the data from the runway side to the ATC side, and this data will be again um, reported uh, manually reported uh, every 30 minutes uh, in the form of meta in, in the in some of the instruments in, in some of those instruments uh, that uh, meta also generated in the coded format. So this meta coded format will be transmitted to the ATC people. Then ATC people will transmit this data to the pilot. Pilot will understand this coded uh, values and uh, uh, he, he, he will understand the all these coded meta values and he will accordingly he will land. He will feed the pressure value into the cockpit and ultimately he, he will set the altimeter uh, with the help of pressure value reported by the IMD people uh, and he will set, set the altimeter value and he will come to know how much distance he, he is flying from the uh, above the ground. So this is the multi-screen runway also. The number of runways, these are the runway numbers. is given 28100092270, these runway numbers. And the runway number data will be combined, integrated in the, in the same display. So uh, AWS ARG, we already, uh, the, uh, my friend has already covered this AWS ARG. This is the website we are uh, showing the AWS data. And this is the uh, network, AWS networks. These are the agro AWS networks. This is radar networks of, in, across the India. All DWR radars are installed at the our uh, uh, IMD. So this main, main communication, all this data will be communicated to the NDC and with the help, with the help of for, with, with, to the forecaster also and developers, this data will be flow in this way. So data, this, in this way data will be flow and it will be all made sensors, agro, agro data, upper air data will be, again, it will be uh, disseminated to the NDC, National Data Sensor, it is located in the Pune. So I will just show the, there are some more flights, uh, slides are there. So we have calibration labs. Here calibration lab, or whatever the instrument manufacturing in the workshop will be calibrated here in the in the calibration lab. This is the pressure calibration uh, device. It is called dead weight testers. Uh, it is had range to 50 to 1200 HPA. It is very accurate uh, uh, instrument to uh, calibrate the pressure sensors. Uh, this is secondary pressure sensors. Uh, this is the temperature humidity calibration. So in the inside the chamber, uh, we we uh, we create the atmosphere like temperature humidity here and it, with the help of the standard uh, probe uh, a standard probe you have to put inside the chamber and the instrument which is we have to measure DUT device under test we have to keep in the chamber or in this way we are increasing the temperature like 10 degree 20 degree 30 degree 40 degree so it will show the temperature in the this um, standard also and it will show the temperature in the this chart chart also or any any digital instrument here also so you have to note down the both reading and you have to calibrate the instrument likewise. So calibration is always remember, it is a range calibration. Calibration and, and comparison is different thing. Comparison means on the spot, you are comparing the values 
of two of two one of two instrument means one is standard and one is duty but calibration is the range calibration so you have to again we have to here create the create the humidity also for 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent humidity and accordingly you will get automatically here in the screen uh, on the humidity on the screen so if the wind tunnel is there big wind tunnel is there so it has a capacity to measure the uh, wind up to up to 35 knots in this is the biggest uh, wind tunnel we are artificially generating the wind speed and we are uh, calibrating the instrument here uh, in the wind tunnel so these are the rain measuring calibration devices are there so we have some uh, uh, calibration devices with the help of uh, injections with the help of beret, beret pipette and all these instruments we are measuring we are calibrating the rainfall instruments uh, which are coming from this uh, other certification also there we are calibrating after calibration we are issuing the certificate to the instrument particular instruments we are uh, they are uh, which are coming from, we are which are coming from the private agencies uh, indian air force indian navies they are, uh, they, are uh, they are sending the uh, their equipment material instruments there in calibration lab and we are issue, issuing the uh, certification also we are giving the training to the indian air force indian navies to the uh, in maintenance and operation of the instrumentation now these radiation instruments are there i will quickly move to some slides so this is the direct radiations we have to measure uh, in the radiation data is very very helpful helpful for the agriculture purpose research purpose and direct radiation from sun it can be measured by this instrument it is called perihelmeter and this is the uh, aperture of this uh, uh, radiation instruments and this global radiation global radiation means all radiations uh, beside this sun, the sun radiation all the surrounded radiation will be measured it is called global radiation which will be measured by this pyranometer this is the device which measures the global radiation and diffuse radiation is uh, nothing but the we are blocking the sun sunlight directly and we are measuring the diffuse radi radiations inside in, in the atmosphere and the device which is blocking that uh, shading ring is provided to block the sun rays direct sun rays and we are measuring the diffuse uh, radiation uh, with the help of the shading in assembly pyranometers. So we have workshop already. I have told you the manufacturing device workshop is there. So many CL, uh, lathe machines are there for manufacturing the metallurgical instruments. Uh, CNC machines are there. The powder coating machines are there. We are manufacturing. We are also producing these this, uh, masks also there. And uh, all these instruments, which are 14 numbers of instruments, we are manufacturing in our workshop. So these are the workshop uh, instrument manufacturing instruments are there we are uh, actually we are manufacturing in the workshop this is the imd make uh, instruments this is the photographs and we are, this is the agencies we are get, taking uh, we are getting help from imd so thank you very much uh, for listening this uh, my short lecture uh, any uh, questions are there please uh, i will be happy participants i request you to uh, you can you can uh, have a couple of questions even in the, and I request series, in the YouTube link, whatever in the chat box, whatever questions they are writing. So you just select questions from there and you just uh, put up to Mr. Sende. Yes, sir. I will reply. Them, reply yes, them. Yeah. Okay. Because of time lag also, we are, uh, we are, we are, we are um, ending here the, uh, our short lecture. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. There is no question. Thank, thank you. Sir. So, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, anyhow, if the participants are having any questions, because uh -huh. it cannot be possible, because uh, if in a lecture hundred hundreds plus slides are shown and there is no question, this.